Hi! So today I want to share with you this wonderful little book that I also finished within one day. Because it's a little book. <laughs> uh, this one is called Follow Your Heart by uh, Italian author Susanna Tamaro. And this was uh, originally published in 1994. It was uh, originally published in Italian. And um, it, it was translated into the English by uh, Avril Bardoni. And so, okay, so apparently this book was kind of like a, uh, it was considered a success when it was first published uh, in Italy at that time. But then again, I wasn't really aware of the Italian literary scene because I was really young back then. I was only one year old. And not to say that I'm more aware of Italian literary scene right now as well. So, <laughs> but yeah, this was... Um, considered as a success so um but i just knew about this book uh recently i saw it one day on a on a used bookstore and i just sort of nabbed it and uh yeah it was uh it was an interesting book um uh, i gave it four stars uh, but then again my star ratings you know don't really mean much so that's why i am going to ramble about this book today in this video so uh what exactly happens in Follow Your Heart. Um, basically, we have this uh, protagonist. Her name is Olga, and she is an elderly woman, and she lives in uh, Opicina, Italy. And uh, this book is pretty much just a series of letters that she writes to her granddaughter, uh, but she does not intend to send these letters to her granddaughter. Instead, she's going to keep these letters uh, with her. And, you know, when, when her granddaughter decides to come home and whatnot, then maybe, maybe then the granddaughter will be able to sort of read these letters. And in those letters, um, basically, uh, the protagonist, uh, Olga, she writes about her past and, uh, you know, the things that are very personal to her. You know the her 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 history as a child, as a young woman, and uh, all of the things that happened to her before that, and the, all the choices and the mistakes that she has made. Uh, she pretty much uh, sort of recounts all of these in her letters that she intends for her granddaughter. Now, the reason why she does this is because. Um, Years ago, before uh, you know, years ago when her granddaughter uh, leaves home, uh, she and her granddaughter were not exactly on friendly terms. Um, they had a strained relationship, but it has always been like that. Um, and the strained relationships, uh, you know, we we will see why that happened. It is going to be kind of like a running theme in this novel, which is which is generational differences. And um, something that we see in these letters is also how, because, um, because Olga talks about her own childhood, she would also talk about her, her family, and she also talk about uh, her mother, and also her mother's mother, and also her own daughter, who is her granddaughter's mother. I mean, duh. <laughs> uh, but there is a pattern here, as you can see. Basically, uh, in her, um, you know, in her uh, sort of like uh, n narration of her own story through these letters, she talks about how there is this kind of um, relationships between all of these women, uh, these five generations, five generations including the granddaughter, uh, you know, the granddaughter's daughter, herself, uh, her mother and also her mother's mother and um, we see how each of those different generations because they they all sort of lead different lives because you know they they live in different environments different uh, different things happen in their lives you know some of them live in times of hardship some of them live in times of relative comfort and you know just that's just an example and that sort of uh, changes the way each of these women see their own surrounding and also how they see um you know their uh their their uh, their moms or their 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 daughters and 
because of the differences in how they see their environment, they also have different personalities, and those things pretty much affect their relationship. Um, so, uh, and often we see in this novel, it can affect their relationship in a rather unfavorable way as well. Which is um, which is a topic that is really nicely explored in this book. Um, I really like how uh, the you know each of those letters just pretty much not only uh, you know uh, tells us about how and why uh, Olga does certain things in her youth, but also how she's able to sort of grasp the concept that you know it's not just about her, but it's also about other people. It's also about the women that came before her and also about the women that come after her. So um, I find it really interesting in that sense. I uh, really love the way that this book feels really empathetic and uh, I really like how this book just feels kind of compassionate and when you read it you don't feel you don't feel angry like you could feel something but it's I wouldn't say that the things that you feel are necessarily going to be uh, kind of uh, negative. You know, you um, a lot of the things in this book, uh, I would say, come across as a series of uh, gems of wisdom. And I feel that, you know, it, they look like that. And I feel that it's kind of easy to sort of read this book as some kind of an inspirational self-help kind of stuff <laughs> but um, you know and and when the, that does happen it does kind of make this book feel sort of cliched in a way but then at the same time um, there are a few things that sort of uh, uh, let's say sort of prevented me from seeing it in that light and one of the things is that this book is a novel after all and the the person who is saying all of these sort of gems of wisdom. Basically, she's, you know, Olga is saying all of these things to her daughter, a granddaughter. Uh, you know, the person who is saying all these is a fictional character. And this is a fictional character with a constructed history. <laughs> of course, fictional. And uh, because of that, you know, there is this kind of element of fiction in all the things that she say to her daughter. And that sort of stopped me from seeing them as like, you know, the absolute truth of such. Um, another thing is that, you know, because this is a fictional character, uh, I, I sort of like the way that, you know, how Olga is sort of presented as someone who is not perfect. And um, she has made mistakes, of course, and she has also some views that, uh, you know, some might consider to be contentious. And I, I kind of like that because it makes her feel like a, a flawed character. And uh, she's not super flawed as in being portrayed in this novel, but she has some flaws. And I feel that, you know, that gives this... Uh, this novel much of a story kind of a feel, you know, uh, even more like a fiction, and it sort of lends this um, kind of unreliability in uh, the things that she says. You know, she sort of makes her as an unreliable narrator, even though the, even though the things that she says are are mostly just about herself. You know, but uh, you sort of feel like you don't you don't you don't you don't want to trust everything that she says but at the same time the way that she says it like i said earlier is just very full of compassion and um basically uh her motivation in writing all of these letters is also kind of explored in here it has something to do with the concept of loss and i'm not going to elaborate further about what and how that is explored here but you know books that sort of talk about loss usually uh kind of they would usually grab me you know because i i do think that that topic is something that that feels kind of compelling to me so um yeah this this book is actually kind of simple the main message 
of this book is pretty much just, you know, be yourself. <laughs> as, um, as cliched as that might sound, but the way that it is explored in this book is definitely more nuanced than just be yourself. Uh, it's, it's not all about positivity in this book. It's all about listening to your, your conscience and also listening to uh, or, or observing other people, listening to other people. And um, it's not always easy. Um, so yeah, lovely book to read on a nice weekend. I definitely read this book on a relatively nice weekend, a sunny weekend. And uh, yeah, that's it for this book. This is Follow Your Heart by Susanna Tamaro. Uh, translated by Avril Bardoni. If you have uh, read this book, what do you think about it? Um, this is... I don't know. I, 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 I don't think that this is a very popular book these days. I mean, I've never heard of this book before. Um, but yeah, if you have heard of this book, uh, if you have the opportunity to read it, why don't just try it? So, uh, yeah, I'll see you again in a different video. And uh, until then, take care. Thanks for watching. Follow your heart. <laughs> and bye-bye. <laughs>